the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The first Mass, at Christmas, which is such a feast, the coming of our Lord into the world, that the Church for a long time, centuries and centuries, has given to priests to celebrate three Masses on each Christmas Day. The first will often be at midnight, that's Christmas Day. Uh, the second will be in the morning, the dawn, and then the third Mass is in the morning. This is the third Mass, and it's considered, the, the first Mass considers the actual birth in the manger, that's the, birth, the Mass of midnight. The Mass in the morning uh, considers uh, the shepherds coming to a door, uh, the third Mass considers, raises our thoughts far more broadly and far higher. In the Epistle of, uh, the, of the Mass, the beginning of the Epistle of St. Paul to the Hebrews, in which, the Epistle in which St. Paul is writing to some Hebrews, Israelites, Jews, uh, in order to persuade them not to backslide from the <coughs> Christian religion which they have taken up uh, and not to go back to the Jewish religion which they left behind, the Mosaic religion. The Mosaic religion was finished at the moment that our Lord died on the cross. It was not yet finished publicly because the cult the worship, the mosaic worship, went on in the mosaic temple unt until the Romans destroyed Jerusalem. That's when the, the mosaic religion was finished in its public worship and practice. But it was finished on the cross. Um, there, therefore, uh, the the religion of not of a man, or that came through a man, Moses, but the religion that came through God, our Lord Jesus Christ, was instituted. And St. Paul argues with the Jews about, from with quotations from Scripture in that epistle, in which uh, he, the quotes all point to the fact that the religion of Christ is the religion of God and, and higher than the angels. Another, a next argument will be that it's higher than, than the religion of Moses or the religion of Aaron, uh, but uh, this is just the beginning of the argument and the, the quotes go to, to show that um, the, Mo, the Mosaic religion is at the most a religion of angels, uh, but the religion of the Son of God is far superior to the Son of the religion of angels through angels because um, it's the create the creature the creator is so much greater than the creature than any any single one of his creatures obviously and so uh, the this is the religion of God, the Son of God it is greater than the Mosaic religion it's greater than all other religions uh, all other religions which become and our Lord will say in his ministry, uh, nobody comes to the Father except by me. They don't get to the Father by Muhammad. They don't get to the Father any longer by Moses. They don't get to the Father by Karl Marx or Freud or whoever. They get to the Father only by Jesus Christ, the child born whose birthday it is today. In the... Um, the, the Gospel of the Mass is the beginning of the Gospel of St. John. It's the passage which is read uh, after every Mass. And it's in Sancti Evangelis Coniuan, the beginning of the, gospel, the Holy Gospel according to, according to John. Uh, so it's, it's a, a, a text which we know very well, which is very broad, very lofty and very broad. It's a survey of the whole history of mankind uh, in, in, in direct relation with the, with the Son of God. 
Thus, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This is the, the divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Word of God is the second person, the Holy Trinity, uh, who took flesh uh, as, as under the name of Jesus Christ. This name was in the beginning, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. So all things were created through Jesus Christ. And since creation is an ongoing act of God, creation is not just that first instant of God bringing something into existence, it's also God's continuing to hold it in existence, to uphold everything in existence. So you know, unless God was upholding in existence this, this, this humble bench, uh, it would collapse back into nothingness. It, it's being stopped at every moment. And, and through Jesus Christ. So this little old bench is being created every moment through Jesus Christ and no, through nobody else. Uh, all things were made by him and without him was made nothing that was made. St. John is emphasizing the point. This is the creator. In him was life and the light was the light of men and the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. Here is the vast amount of the history of mankind, sin. Uh, in, in him is life, life is the light of men, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Men uh, are wicked, men sin, they put, they put themselves in darkness, and then once they're in darkness, m m many a time, they cannot they are inaccessible to the light. The light cannot reach them. And so the church has shone like a light for 2,000 years, but it's by no means all men on the face of the earth that it has been able to draw into its bosom. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to give testimony to the light that all men might believe through him. He was not the light as St. John the Baptist himself said. This is John the Baptist. Uh, John said, it, it, are, you, are you the Christ? No. Are you the prophet? No. Who are you then? I am a voice in the wilderness, said John, one of the Gospels of, of, uh, of Advent, to give testimony to the light. Uh, he was the true light, our Lord Jesus Christ, was the true light which enlighteneth every man that cometh into this world. That's another huge statement. It says, what does it say? It says that every man is enlightened. Every man, it stands to reason. God brings souls into this life, into this world, into this existence, only to bring them to heaven if they agree, if they agree to be brought to heaven. That's what we are here on this earth for, to go to heaven. And it's true of every single human being. And every single human being, lighten it, every man that comes into this world, every single human being is given enough grace and enough light to be able to save his soul if he wants. Some people say, uh, would say, I have never had any to do with Christianity. I have never had any to do with God. He doesn't concern me. I don't concern him if he exists. This kind of talk, it's not true. That man has, at some point in his life, um, been able to see the truth, and then he said yes or he said no. Probably, more probably, he's had, there have been many moments in his life when he's able to see the truth. But, if somebody is shown the truth and refuses it, obviously he increases his damnation. Therefore, Almighty God is not going to show indiscriminately truth to all souls all the time because many of them will only make use of that to scorn God and to refuse uh, salvation. And then, But according to the wisdom of God, which is infinite and which knows from eternity all circumstances and all moments and all reality of the life of each of us, According to God's wisdom, he doses 
make small or make greater, makes more frequent or less frequent, the light that men receive. This, this man is a hardened sinner. God will only occasionally appeal to him. Or maybe he will, there's something he knows in a man's soul which should be corresponding to grace and therefore he, God constantly repeats his appeals. This, these are mysteries between God and the soul which we, we know not of, but which God, Almighty God, knows perfectly. Um, the true light, he was the true light. Our Lord Jesus Christ was the true light that enlightens every man that comes into this world. It's a tremendous statement. <coughs> and it means that, that all of these men, human beings who will say, I have nothing to do with God, and God has nothing to do with me. No, it's not true. God created this soul for his heaven, for nothing else. And uh, the, the terms on which this man lives are God's terms, not his own terms. His own terms would be, I shall, in, I shall live my life, and then I will die, and then it will, I will be out, the candle will be blown out, and there will be absolutely nothing. I shall disappear back into nothingness. I'm sorry, it's not true. Whether you like it or not, you're going to live. Your soul is immortal. It will separate from your body at the moment of your death. But um, from then on, it will be either purgatory and heaven, or straight heaven, or straight hell. And whether you like it or not, you, it, your soul is not going to drop out of existence. It will stay by itself without its body until the end of the world. Then the end of the world, your soul will be united with what was your body during this life, either to go to heaven, jointly with eternal bliss, or to drop into hell for eternal damnation. And that's, that's the truth of your destiny. That's, that is your nature, which you can't change. You, you, there's nothing you can change about the eternity of your soul. You have, you have no handle on it at all. It depends upon God. God exists. He's much, much, much greater than you are. And you have in front of you eternal hell or eternal heaven. And you cannot not have that. He was, he was in the world, and this is the, this is the enormous sadness for our, Lord, for our Lord himself. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. So here is the creator of the world, living for 30 years, 33 years in the world, just like any other human being, with a body of flesh and blood, just like every, telling the complete truth, revealing perhaps unimagined truths about, about God, about life, about eternity, about sin, about uh, the sacraments. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. But people don't want to know. A mass of people just don't want to know. They're comfortable with their little lives, with their little materialism, with their little which may be, to a great extent, honest, maybe. Many people live naturally decent lives that have nothing seemingly to do with God. They're not such good lives, after all, deep down, because these people are not obeying the first commandment. Because the first commandment is, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind. And they are... They're loving him if they're if they're loving him, which they may be. But if they're loving him, they're not loving him with all their heart and mind. Because if they were, they would be open to the truth. They would learn the truth, and they would be aiming. They would they would be living Catholic lives in order to get to heaven. Of course, they could be sinners, but then there are the sacraments, and they're the they're means. Almighty God came for sinners. His church caters for sinners. His church looks after sinners. Many people call her Mother Church because the church is so motherly in looking after souls and wanting to help them to get to heaven and giving them the means to get to heaven. 
He was in the world, and the world was made. The world was made by him. It is. Con it continues to be made every single moment, upheld in its existence, just like all of us human beings are upheld in existence every moment by God. And if God stopped upholding us, we would drop back into nothingness, just like the bench, just like we were drawn out of create nothingness when we were created by God. The soul created directly by God, the, the body through instruments, but behind the instruments, like our father and mother, uh, is still, at the end, God. <coughs> the world, he came into the world, was the world was made by him. He did everything to help every single soul to get to heaven. The Mohammedans, the Jews, they all created by God, for God. And with the, they, they are all given light. The, 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 every man that comes into the world is enlightened. God does everything for us, but we don't want it. We turn it down. He came into his own, and his own, he came unto his own, that's of course the Jews, and his own received him not, they crucified him. Immense sadness of our Lord. There are privileged souls who say that the great sadness in the Garden of Gethsemane was thinking of, because he foresaw it from eternity, the large, the majority of souls, the majority of human beings, the greater number of human beings falling into hell, not wanting what he came to bring and what he came to give, what he came to pay for at a heavy price, his own sacrifice. He said, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But, and this is what, why Almighty God, despite so many losses, created this world, as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, by sanctifying grace, by, through the sacraments, through his church. To those that believe in his name, the first thing necessary for salvation is, is, is faith. It's necessary to believe. What the first thing that marks our Catholics from other men, or Christians from other men, is that they believe in Jesus Christ. They believe that he is God. They believe that he died, and so, uh, I believe what the fuck, they believe in everything in the creed. And to those that he that believe in his name, and who are these who believe in his name? Who are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. In other words, every believing soul is a work of God. That God created his nature, and then God also gave him his supernatural faith and grace by which he will be saved. And so the word, was, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And so he sees, he foresees the majority of human beings not wanting to go to heaven, wanting not to go to heaven, preferring not to go to heaven, preferring not to submit to God in order to go to heaven, pride. And... Uh, He foresees the majority of men turning down his great offer of, of eternal bliss. And he sees, but, he, but alongside those, he does see a minority of souls which will, which will respond to his offer and which will respond to his love, will respond to his sacrifice. It will cost them. They will need to control themselves and behave themselves for the rest of their lives. They will need to love God. They will need to practice the true religion of God. But their reward will be eternal bliss, eternal and unimaginable bliss. And these will have accepted God's offer. And when they enter into bliss, they will be astonished by how far what God is giving them surpasses anything they've ever imagined or dreamt of or could dream of. 
And that's the truth about heaven. We can't imagine what, it, what it's like, how beautiful it is, how beautiful the vision of God is. St. Teresa of Lazia died at the age of 24, but she was a great saint by the time she died, already a great saint. And at the end of her days, she was dying of tuberculosis, which was very painful. And she was suffering a great deal. But for, for a few moments, Almighty God showed her the reward she was going to have in heaven. How she, she must have been given a special capacity to, be, to, to understand that, because normally it's, it's absolutely beyond our, our means of comp comprehending anything. But she, she saw, she was given to see, and she said, Oh my God, you have surpassed even my expectations. She, great saint, had uh, ideas of what heaven would be like. She had her imaginations of, of heaven. She obviously knew all the authors who say, like Isaiah and St. Paul, it, it, it's, uh, it passes, surpasses all imagination, all possibility of, of conceiving what it's like. She knew all of those quotes. She knew that paradise was far beyond the human imagined. Still, she was a saint, so she had, she had a, a grand expectations. And then she, see, she, she sees for a moment and she says, Lord, you've you surpassed even my expectations. Of course, God is God and we are, are, the very, we are creatures. We're never going to be able to uh, reach the thoughts of God. That's the truth. That is this God. And um, it's a stupendous offer. And it doesn't cost, ultimately, it doesn't cost very much. When we die, when we will be on our deathbeds, we will look back and say, if we've persevered, please God, we will look back and say, it wasn't that difficult after all. My goodness me, what I'm being given, what I'm being offered, what I'm being given in exchange for what I gave. What I gave was little, little, but that little is enough for God to give us because we have responded to his offer. It's enough for God to give us um, eternal bliss, eternal unimaginable bliss. And the word was made flesh, so our God had decided from eternity to, to take flesh despite the majority of men turning him down, he will still go through the, the 33 years of human life ending in an atrocious death and dwelt among us and we saw his glory as it were the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And this of course is St. John speaking the Apostle because um, he obviously like the, all of the other Apostles he spent the full three years alongside our Lord, getting to know our Lord, um, very much loved by our Lord for his um, youth and innocence and uh, sanctity. And um, he, we, we, we saw the, the glory of God, as it were, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. <coughs> Let us pray. Let's pray to the Mother of God. Uh, pray the rosary especially uh, that's that prayer was it, it's, it's a humble prayer but it wasn't too humble for any saint ever since ever since Saint Dominic and that is the prayer which Our Lady asks for whenever she appears anywhere on earth and she's appearing now all over the earth all over the face of the earth because she she, she's a mother and she wants to save us from the chastisement and the, the destruction that's coming. Let's pray, pray, pray the rosary and pray not only for ourselves, not only for our families, but pray also for the hosts and hosts and multitudes, millions and millions of souls that don't want God. He's come into the world and they're not interested. He's, uh, he, 
they, they don't, he was, he was in the world, wisdom and even the world knew him not. He came unto his own and his own received him not. That's a credit for multitudes of human beings who are far from God, who don't know him and who don't want him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.